What's up everyone, thanks for watching. My name's Dave and today I'm going to make a moxen vise. This bench top vise is a beneficial tool to have in the shop, especially if you're working on dovetails or other joinery. The two screw design provides excellent clamping force and allows you to put wide boards between the screws. And it brings your workpiece up higher off the bench so you don't have to hunch over as much when laying out dovetails and other joints. I'm using a kit from Benchcrafted to build this vise. There are a lot of other options out there, but I've been so impressed with the leg vise and tail vise on my workbench that I built recently that I decided to use their parts on this project as well. I'm using 8 quarter or 2 inch thick maple for this project, but you could easily use poplar if it's more available, or even yellow pine that you can get at the home center. I'll start by dimensioning the boards down to the proper length, width, and thickness. You can download the dimensions for this project on the Benchcrafted website. I didn't follow them exactly, I did add a couple extra little features that I'll show in a little while. Once all the boards are cut to size, it's time to start laying out the joinery. The rear or fixed jaw is going to have shoulders on each side. The shoulders are going to be what I use to clamp the moxen vise down to the workbench with. I'll mark out where those shoulders are going to go, and I'll also mark out where the screw is going to be installed at. I'll clamp the fixed jaw into my leg vise and use my tenon saw to cut the shoulders by hand. After I'm finished cutting the shoulders out, I'll clean up all the saw marks and get down to the lines I made with a large chisel, and then I'll come back with a fine rasp and just smooth everything out. I need to drill two 3 quarter inch holes all the way through the rear jaw, and then drill two counter bores for nuts to sit in that will hold the screws in place. I'll measure the thickness of one of the nuts, and then drill the counter bore so that the nut sits flush with the face of the jaw. After I finish the counter bore, I'll change out to a 3 quarter inch bit and drill the rest of the way through. I'm using a spade bit for this operation because it has a long point on it. I can drill most of the way through the board until the point just starts to poke out the back side of the board, then flip the board over and finish the hole from the other side to reduce any kind of blowout or tear out I might get. I'll use the holes I drilled in the rear jaw to mark out where I'm going to drill holes in the front jaw. The front and rear jaw aren't the same height, and this is done on purpose. The front jaw is a little bit taller so that you can register the vise easier up against the workbench when you go to clamp it down. So I'll mount both jaws upside down onto the workbench, clamp them up, and then I can mark out accurately where the holes need to go on the front jaw. Now I can take the front or adjustable jaw over to the drill press and drill a 3 quarter inch hole all the way through. The holes that drilled on the front jaw need to be oblong so that the vise doesn't bind up on the screws when you close it at different angles. You can do this by drilling offset holes with a Forstner bit on the drill press, but my drill press is a little old and wonky, so uh, it was easier for me to just drill one hole and then come in with a rat tail file and oblong the holes by hand. The next step is to install the nuts into the face of the rear jaw. I'll start by inserting the screw into the hole and then tightening the nuts up on both sides and this should hold the nut tight while I trace around with a marking knife. Once I've marked out the shape of the nut, I can come back in with a chisel and chop out all the waste until I can get the nut to fit into the rear jaw nice and tight. I'll repeat the process for the other side and then come back with a straight edge, in this case my square, and run it across the face of the jaw to make sure the nut sits below flush. Here I'm marking out for a 60 degree chamfer that's going to go on the front jaw. This chamfer is going to allow me to hold my saw at a steeper angle when I'm cutting half blind dovetails without running into the front jaw of the vise. I'm going to use my table saw to make the cut. I'll start by setting the saw blade to a 60 degree angle and I'll use a feather board to keep the uh, front jaw pushed up against the fence as I make the cut. After I've finished the cut at the table saw, I'll use a card scraper to get rid of any saw marks that may have been left behind. Here I'm going to break all the edges of the front and rear jaws using my low angle block plane. Just want to give the tool a better feel, um, have a nice smooth texture to it, and it'll make it look nicer. Any of the spots I can't get with my low angle plane, I'll use a chisel to create the small chamfer. The next step of the build process is to install what's called a stabilizer block. 
This block just sits on the rear jaw um, flush with the bottom so that the jaw or the vise itself has a wider footprint and is easier to install to your bench. And you can also use this block to use holdfast to clamp down the vise to the bench. The stabilizer block only gets installed with glue, so I'll apply some glue to the surface and then attach it to the bottom of the rear jaw, uh, clamp everything up and let it sit overnight. After the glue's dried, I'll take the parts over to the joiner and run it across the bottom face of the jaw and stabilizer block just to make everything flush. I'm installing a rubber cork combination material that Benchcrafted calls Crubber to the front face of the jaw. Um, this is just going to protect the workpiece as I'm clamping it down. Uh, I've used this in the past and then held it together with trim adhesive, but the trim adhesive came off after a few days. So this time I'm using contact cement, which is much stronger. I'll just apply some to each face, the front face of the jaw and to the Crubber material, and then let it sit for about 15 minutes and stick the two pieces together. I don't have a roller or anything to roll this material down and it was folded in the box that it came in. So I'm just going to apply some clamping pressure and let it sit for a few hours. You don't have to use clamping pressure when using contact cement, but this will help me get the creases out. After the contact cement's had some time to dry, I'll come back, unclamp everything and use a utility knife to trim away any excess crubber material that sticks out past the jaw. I don't want to leave the vise raw wood on this, so I'm applying a finish. The finish consists of boiled linseed oil mixed with mineral spirits and polyurethane. I'll apply three coats to it. I'll sand with 220 grit in between, uh, just so it doesn't feel rough. Now I'm ready to start assembling the vise. I'll start by clamping it to the workbench by using a couple of F-clamps. I want to make sure that the rear jaw is either flush to the edge of the bench or just sticking out past it. Then I'll install some 3-in-1 dry film lube to the screws. I don't want to use any kind of grease here or anything that will attract the sawdust and dirt to get on the threads. Now I can thread the screws into the rear jaw all the way through and past so that I can install another nut on the back side of the jaw. Now I can install the front jaw and make sure everything glides smoothly without binding up on the screws. I want to make sure that the front jaw moves in and out parallel and also one side at a time with no binding. Next I'll install the two wheels and make sure they spin freely as well. And here I'm just showing how you can use a holdfast clamp down to the stabilizer block to keep the vise in place. The F clamps are plenty strong enough by themselves and the holdfast would be plenty strong enough by themselves as well. And here I'm installing a piece of poplar into the vise just to give it a test drive. You can see that the clamping power on this vise is pretty good and I can put all my weight on that board and it doesn't slip or move at all. So I'm very happy with the performance of the Moxon vise. The wheels spin nice and free and smooth and it's very fast to open and close the vise. Uh, I clamped some wide boards into it uh, and some tapered boards as well uh, and then took a couple of practice runs at making some dovetails just to see if there was a, a comfort dis difference with um, sawing at a higher level and it's nice not to be as hunched over. I will admit it's going to take me a little bit to get used to cutting dovetails like this. I'm so used to doing it uh, on the leg vise that um, my saw is at a different angle and my first round of dovetails didn't come out real good. Um, um, but my second round came out came out nice. I just had to make a couple adjustments. So I think this is going to be a great vice, uh, and hopefully I get a lot of years of use out of it. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give me a like or a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.